Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. That is the silly name we have given our unboxing videos with the silly premise that this game is checking in to our collection, and we got to check it out before we can put it on the shelf with the other games. Today, I am looking at a game, I don't know about hot off Kickstarter, but from Kickstarter, Flick Wars. There we go, Flick Wars. This is a dexterity-based Miniature, I guess miniature is not the right term. Uh, a dexterity-based war game where you are going to flick your units at other units, and if you hit the units or remove them, you're going to build your armies using points, but it's a it's a flicking-based dexterity game, like games like Pitch Car or Crokinole. Um, so this, uh, i got to say, right off the bat, I don't know about this box size, but this is from Breaking Games. I do have to thank Breaking Games for sending me a review copy of this game. Uh, this is a game I actually did a preview when it was still on Kickstarter. I reviewed it then. I did like it. I liked the game quite a bit. They just contacted me not too long ago and said, hey, the final game's out, the production copy's out, we're going to be sending it to the stores, and asked if I'd be interested in reviewing the final version of the game. So this is step one. We're going to take a look at what's in the box. For other gaming content, check out tabletopbellhop.com where you're going to be able to find other unboxing videos, actual plays, reviews, news, and other cool gaming stuff. A big part of that website is answering your gaming and game night questions, thus the Cardboard Concierge, part of the Tabletop Bellhop. You can send gaming and game night questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com, or just go to the website and click on Ask the Bellhop. Under there, you can also find answers to your gaming and game night questions, what questions other people have asked, like, what are some of the best licensed board games on the market to date? Or, what are some great cooperative kids games? Enough about that. We're going to unbox Flick Wars. We're going to take a look at what's in this ridiculous box. I'm going to start by removing the shrink wrap. Then I'm going to let you know what it says on the box. Then I'll tilt the camera down so you can kind of see what's going on. This is my first time seeing the production copy of this game. It's got a nice glossy box, but I have to say right off the bat, like, look at this thing. This... This is kind of ridiculous. That is one of the, I don't know where this is gonna go on my shelf. Like, I don't know where how that's gonna get stored. That is a crazy box. Very glossy. Um, so again, it notes, dexterity, strategy, and tactics in 30 minutes. Deploy your team and fight it out on the tabletop. Fair enough, I played it. I don't know about how, I'm, I, I don't know. I was playing about 30 minutes. It's got some strategy and tactics. We have it on the back, it says, Battle for control of the planet surface. Use one of six factions from the galactic fleet to the vortex energy technologies. Each faction has a unique set of units to deploy. Use your dexterity skills to flick your units on the 3D neoprene battlefield mat. Tactical skills are required as you use your special abilities to the best advantage in team play. Free for all or co-op game modes. One, deploy your units to the battlefield. Two, take turns flicking your pieces to move an attack. Get within range and then make your attack. Eliminate all the enemy to win. Fast to learn and play with basic cards. 3D terrain on a super smooth smooth mat. Team play, free for all and co-op. Six unique factions. List the game components here. Uh, does note choking hazard because of the small pieces. Does note one to six players. Here it says 30 to 60 minutes. I think that's more realistic. Age is 12 plus. All right, we're going to tip this this way. I can just barely get this all into camera, so... I do know the reason the box is like this, but man, anyone who has played Marvel Legendary or encounters any of the Marvel games that come with a neoprene play mat, and you have your box that's about half this size and the mat's folded in half, that's why this box is so big. Because when you take those mats out, they often have creases in them. And this is to eliminate that. Now, I gotta admit, I've never had a problem with the creases in Legendary or any of those games. So here we have the components in this box. You can see the mat here. We're gonna take this off. This feels like, what is this? Flick Wars game components, rule book, neoprene mat, range rulers. I have to assume the rule book is in here. So note this is the production version of the game. So if you went to a game store and bought Flick Wars this is what you would get. Oh, that's nice. Use these debris stickers instead of the ones in the game box. So that's what this was. But this was in this package like this. So that was just kind of poor. That should have been that way. 
And we do have the rule book. Okay, I'm confused. I have no idea what this means for the debris stickers because I don't see any debris stickers. So I don't know what was up with this. That was a little confusing. So we do have the rule book. I don't know why it was in this cardboard. The rule book is way better than the original I had seen. Uh, credits on the back. We are looking at 15 pages. Full color, nice big font, I like that. Lots of examples. These are, this is a nice looking rule book. Um, stunt discs, six different factions. We got some cards showing the battle mat set up, how to set up your mat for multiple players. How do you, how to win, it's an important one. Some color coding here. Graphic based um, examples, which I guess works for a flicking game. Whole bunch of ability details here. So that's only reference. So at this point, we're already at the advanced game. So the actual rule book, it looks like is only eight pages. And then, yeah, we're into details, the rules for co-op play. That makes more sense. I was thinking 16 pages was a bit much for how long this one was. What the different symbols mean. How the terrain expansion works. And the epic battlefield rules. Okay, here we have the range rulers. It looks like they put in enough for each player. That's cool. Again, when I did the prototype of this, the game only included one of these. So you had to pass it around. It's nice to see one of these for each player. So this is just, it's a nice thick card. Uh, one thing some people will love, there's nothing here to flick. Everything is already pre-punched. So we have six range rulers. We have tons of crystals. These are your currency in the game. You're gonna use these to set off, send off abilities. So you're pretty much, you've got small and large. Pretty standard board game components nowadays. There are acrylic crystals, little tiny ones and big ones. Whoops. Box inserts, definitely a little subpar here. I guess it's functional-ish, but. We got some cards, we'll get to those. We got a box insert falling over here. And then kind of in, down in there, there's some cards kind of trapped. We'll get those out. Okay, these are your bases, which I know, again, I, I have done, I have seen the prototype of this. So what these do is these actually tuck, I don't want to fold it the wrong way. These tuck under the edge of the map to show off your bases. So you should have one of these for each faction. Artwork's fine, sci-fi looking. Different races, you got different factions. You know what, let's take them out. So you have the different looks of the different factions here. Each is unique. Uh, they did the good thing. It's not only color coded, there are symbols. So that's good for anyone with vision problems. Uh, this baggie's resealable, so that's kind of a nice touch. Though once these are folded, they're gonna be a pain to get back in here. Be honest, I'm not gonna bother with baggy. I'm just gonna throw it in here. Then you have your wooden discs. Again, I am pleased to see this. When I got my prototype, I had a bunch of stickers to put on. Everything is already stickered. So each of these is two-sided, so they can represent one or a different unit. They're fairly thick wood, colored already. You've got multiple factions in here with multiple unit types. Here's a couple of the purple units. These are definitely bug looking creatures. I gotta admit, whatever the, the backs, these might be destroyed. So these are hazards. So these aren't two sided units. In that case, it's there's your unit. And then there's like a rubble, which makes things a little easier. Yeah, that makes more sense. I'm like, man, I couldn't tell what that is across the board, but I can very easily tell that's some kind of flying ship. And I can tell that that is a small squad of vehicles. So let's get a few of these over to the non-rubble side. Some more of the units in the game. I'm not gonna bother showing them all. A whole bunch of discs. 
baggie full of this for your flicking pleasure. And then we have what is taking up so much room. So this is what it, why the box is so big is for this neoprene mat and so it doesn't end up with a fold because this is how it would have to go in a normal size box and this is much bigger than your average you're going to get a three by three battlefield out of this this is not in any way shrink wrap so once i open this it's open or sorry no here we go all right so neoprene mat I'm not gonna fold out the whole thing. The whole point of this neoprene mat is so you've got these here and you're flicking. And you gotta say, wow. Yeah, that slides nice. That's the whole point. So if I was gonna attack that guy, I'd get my range ruler out and go, yep, I'm within range three. I can attack him, flick, oh, I missed, and so on. I will admit the neoprene mat has a rather distinct smell. It is not pleasant. I would want to put this out and air this out somewhere for a little while. Well, extremely not pleasant. I'm not going to bother putting this back in the bag because I want it to air out. But we're not playing. mat back in the box it does fit nice all right then you have these okay so this is how they do terrain in the game and i actually thought this was pretty fascinating all these are is little wooden bumps but what you do i know i just put it away silly me is you put them under the mat to make it three-dimensional so you would have your mat here and i'll put a bump right in the middle and you would now have a hill in the middle of your battlefield and then when you flick your things, they're going to go different ways based on the hill. I actually thought it was very well done when I played with the prototype version of the game. So there are a whole bunch of those. One, two, three. So you have six bumps that you can throw in there. I will admit when we played, uh, we added to that. I had grabbed some of my wooden bowls that I use when we're playing board games to hold components. I would slid some of those under the mat. We had grabbed a wooden cube, threw that under there. I loved the idea of throwing components under the mat to make it three-dimensional and to be honest that's the fun part about this game is trying making that bank shot around a hill rolling over something into the enemies stuff like that was a lot of fun so the only thing left to do is look at the cards so we're going to seal up the rest of this so no nothing to actually punch out that is a nice touch i can't complain about that whatsoever uh, this pack of cards does not have any type of quick release. So maybe it looks like there should be one on the top. But those are always a pain to find. So I'm just going to use a hobby knife to cut these open. Careful not to damage any of the cards. Oh, I almost lost a disc. I'll throw that in there. All right. So we have the various factions. The Vortex Energy Technologies, the Unobtainables, really. The Union for Industrial Mechanics. ISOR, I have no idea what that stands for. Glyphen Inhabitants. Galactic Fleet for Allied Planets. And then AI Units and Powers. I have no idea. Oh, okay. So just the different units. And then thank you, every company that gives me a nice summary sheet. Appreciated. There are six for all of them. Then there's an AI deck. I don't know what's up with the AI deck. So I don't know. This has some kind of AI system, so it must be for playing solo. I don't know. That was not something that was part of the original game when I played the prototype. So I do not know. Interesting. There's a whole AI system here. AI units and powers probably ties with that. Now we will look at some of the army cards. I'm just going to toss these in the box while I go through it. So here are the unobtainables. So you have the symbol that is on the disc. You have a couple things like the cost to play it. And then it's range. So this costs five of those crystals to be able to put into play. It has a range of one. It has a melee attack and it has a camouflage ability. 
each unit is going to be, you're going to have a couple of the same. So you have ambushers, you have crystalliners, or you have these. Yeah, so this is the same. So you have four different cards that can all represent the same unit type. So when you build your army, you're going to pick which of these would go with that disc. And you would put it in play and all of your discs of this type would count as one of these four unit types. So that hasn't changed since the original game. And it'll be the same. There's four different types for this unit type for orange. And then three different types for this unit type. And every army is going to have three types. All of different costs, all have different special abilities. So that really quickly was the orange. Here's the yellow units. Not a lot of card artwork, but it's not really needed. So again, four different ones for that unit type. That unit type, and then that unit type. Then you've got the red faction, which I remember being my personal favorite, to be honest. That unit type, and again, multiple choices for each unit type, and then your biggest units that cost the most, cost seven, and their various special abilities. Very functional cards. Um, card quality is decent. I wouldn't call it good or bad, it's, it's in between. They're a little bit flimsier than I would like, but they're fine. No specific finish on them. They're not glossy or linen or anything like that. Again, the blue units, same thing. There are three different types of units. Oh, it looks like four different types. No, this one just wasn't in the back. So you have some infantry, you have some flying ships, and then you have like a big helicarrier. These are nicer than they looked when I played the prototype. They clean them up quite a bit. I personally would have really liked like some nice big art on the back to show what these, like there's obviously some little bug thing. I'd like to see that blown up. That's a small, small image. And finally, the last faction. When I played, there were not six factions. So that's another change. Some kind of weird spider drawings. All right. So that is everything you get in the retail final version of Flick Wars. A dexterity-based strategic war game. I would call it, a, I would basically call it a skirmish miniature game. The difference is your miniatures are pogs. They're wooden, they're not even pogs. Which again is an odd choice. These are not crokinole style wooden pieces to flick. So unlike, uh, say, Flick Wars, or not Flick Wars, this is Flick Wars. Unlike, say, um, I'm drawing a blank, Pitch Car. Unlike Pitch Car, this has its own type of components. They are all the same size. And we have the rule book. We have the unnecessary cardboard thing that I still understand. And then this, which makes no sense. This is the, the one part of this unboxing I'm lost. I have no idea what this means. Use these debris stickers instead of those including the game box. I have to assume they did that because I had no stickers to put on anything. I don't know. Here you can kind of see the um, the bases stood up on the edge of the map. I That was okay. It wasn't great. Mainly, though, your base just shows where your units are going to spawn. At one time, the units were big wooden discs, and they could move around, or the, the bases, and then people could attack them, but the problem is they get shifted and moved, and that was kind of weird, and what happens is someone clicked your base off the edge of the map. Um, I'm not going to bother putting this back in the box. I don't see why. I would need it. I'll throw the ridiculously huge lid. You gotta wonder how much this cost a box. Wow, with the gloss. There you have it. Flick Wars, a dexterity based skirmish game from Breaking Games. Originally on Kickstarter, funded. This is the full production copy. I do have to thank Breaking Games for sending me a copy of this to review. I'm going to have this out at some local events, so if you're around the Windsor area and you want to check this game out, let me know, and I'll bring it out to one of the local events. Otherwise, watch for reviews and so on to hit the Tabletop Bellhop blog and the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming podcast, which you can find on YouTube, or sorry, also on YouTube, but on iTunes and your favorite place to find podcasts. You can listen to me and my co-host, Sean, answer your gaming and game night questions. One final reminder, send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com and we will answer them for you. Consider us a dear Abbey for gamers. One last thing, if you dig this content, head over to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop and consider tipping your bellhop. For Tabletop Bellhop, I'm Mo. Good night and game on.